Yay! <laughs> Looks like we got Lori, Jen, Katie, Jan. Who else is there? Julie. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you guys tonight here on YouTube. Oh, there's that lovely ad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Skip it. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's see. So I want to be doing um, some more mixed media. I'm going to uh, go over again how to cover the rock, um, how Katie showed me, Miss Katie Thompson, and I'll show you how I did this, and then we'll go from there. So I want to start with finding my comments. I can't find them there again. <laughs> Where'd they go? There they are. Okay, we good. So let's start with our blank rock. I had several of you ask how to do this, and we did cover it on the Mixed Media Frenzy on Friday the 13th of August, but I would since we started with ours already covered, I'm going to go over it again. So you start off with your piece of paper or fabric. I've been using uh, fabric and I've done a few bees. <laughs> so I did use this piece of fabric that I covered. This is the one I did on the Friday Live. I used covered it with um, matte gel Liquitex. So that works really nicely. Seals up there good. And then this one is the other fabric um, that I used. So fabric works great. I'm kind of like really preferring fabric, sort of. <laughs> it's really, I, I find it much easier to work with. Anyways, for paper or fabric, whatever you're working with, turn it face down, turn your face of your rock where you want so if you want your paper like this, do this. Technical terms there. If you want this, do this. Thank you. And then take your pencil, tilt it in just a bit, and go around your rock. Hi, Sidna. And then cut it out. And I cut mine a little bigger than I think you probably ought to, but I want mine to go out just a little bit because I have some icky on the side of my rock. So I'm going to try to cover it up just a little bit. Sorry for the hand there. Mm. Hi, Lonnie. <laughs> All right. So make sure. Oh, no, that's about right. Okay, so make sure it works. And then Katie showed a wonderful tip. You put some cuts all around your paper. I wasn't paying exact attention to how deep she made these. I should have asked her before I came on here. Anyways, we're going to make it fit a round rock. So... Flat paper, rock, paper, scissors. Yep, I said it again. <laughs> All right. So there's that. Now you're going to want to apply. You can use Liquitex Matte Medium Liquid. Hi, Bambi. Or uh, Matte Gel Liquitex. I prefer this with the fabric by far. Lot This, yes, lots of it. <laughs> I'm going to use quite a bit of this on the rock. Get a nice thick coat going. And then you're going to want to let it get just a tad bit tacky. So I got my fan over here, so we can let that work into that. Let's see, what's everyone up to? Hi, Allison. 
All right, Sidna, thank you. That's so wonderful. Oh my goodness. So you've been watching my videos all day long and then you, you caught the live. I'm so honored. Thank you. Okay, that is tacky. And Julie's watching football. So who's your team? Oh boy, here we go. Talking sports. Never mind. Don't answer that. <laughs> I will lose you guys. Okay. So then you line it up where you want it. And then start folding in. Actually, I think we do this part. And then kind of fold in your pieces. Now remember, mixed media is not my strong point, but I am willing to learn things to share. So, I am learning. And this paper was part of a paper pack Katie shared with me, so I have no clue. And I think it was old from on her part too, so we don't necessarily have the links for this paper. Um, it's a... Let me show you the sheet it came from real quick. It came from a, is it, what is this, scrapbooking size page. I think those are 12 by 12s, the big squares. And it came, I believe she said, like in a, a packet, like a book of paper. So, Katie, if you're on, if you know. <laughs> um, I, I know we probably can't find the exact paper pack, but... I think you can pick up ones like that on Amazon for sure and Michael's and Joann's. I've seen them everywhere. And this one just has lots of different really cool stuff in it. So did I do it right, boss? <laughs> Katie? <laughs> she is the mixed media boss. The queen of mixed media. So hopefully I got that right. It feels a little wrinkly, but I think that gives texture. I like that. Julie's saying she found doing a rock said it's easier to use fingers to rub the matte medium over the top fabric once played. I agree. Fingers work better and I should have my gloves on because as you guys can see my poor boo-boos. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is in a nutshell how we covered the rocks with the decoupage. It's a very basic decoupage application. So then, that's where we're at with this. And I did apply a coat of Born Pretty. This came, I think this was from AliExpress, and it came with, um, <laughs> I don't even remember, I think some nail foils. Anyways, um, it is the brush-on glue that is, it air dries. So it's pretty much like tack it you brush it on and when it dries it's sticky however it doesn't work for foil very well so what it does work for is a patchy transfer so I like to use this when I want it to be distressed or antiqued looking kind of how you would do with um, gold, gold leaf you know you just kind of tap it on there so let me show you. This is sort of... No, it's not dry enough yet. I was going to say we could do it with this when it gets tacky. But um, let me make sure I have the right piece of foil over here. Hang on, guys. Sorry. i got to clip a piece over here. All right, so handy dandy wanda foil. <laughs> and you just stick it on and pull it off like that. And it will stick to just little bits of the, the rock. 
I don't know if this is dry enough yet to grab it. Not quite. But I'll show you when it gets there. So, I also want to work on some fun mixed media. And I have this killer owl. Uh, this is a pendant. It came in a bag of pendants. And I will get you the link for that. I do have that. I'll show you kind of. They, they won't all come with the same things. But it came with a bunch of stuff like this. Really, really beautiful pieces to work with. So if you want to, you know, embellish your rock with them. Or you can just make pendants. Like I work with a lot of these. And I put that um, mood changing pen. The liquid crystal in there. That one had some dust in it. So it looks like a science experiment. <laughs> Oh, it's too funny. Anyways, back to... So the owl was in here. I know they do sound like treasure, don't they? <laughs> and I manipulated the owl. I bent it to fit my rock. And I clipped off the... Um, the the loop on it so I took my pliers and just bent it back and forth until it clipped off and then I took my missing nail file it's the metal nail file here and filed down the scratchy bits there okay so if you can see the bend See how it's not flat? It's because my rock is not flat. So now it fits on my rock really nicely, really smooth. I could even go more with it if I wanted, but I think I kind of like the it sitting off just a bit. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that neat? This Lonnie's saying she likes the bubble look on this. It totally looks like a science experiment. Like it's really cool looking. Jan, I got the pendants on Amazon, and um, I do have a link for that that I can add after. That is I that pendant that I just showed here has two coats of the liquid crystal 12 color pure form in there it does more color changing than the brush on one I was using anyways I was just playing around with it and I didn't realize I had any dust down in there so you got to be making sure that was great English got to be making sure <laughs> that um, your surfaces are very very clean and ready for the liquid crystal when you use that look how pretty <laughs> they're fun I love playing with it I just oh my gosh now I have like four of those pens and a pot of this and it goes everywhere <laughs> so I'm also going to use some Doc Martens Dr. not Doc Martens those are shoes Dr. Martens iridescent calligraphy color copper plate gold and I may or may not use the bright red from um Julie, thank you, Julie, because I'm going to be using this fun cellophane to do some dichroic looking gem inside the owl belly. So we're going to do some different things here. So I think I want to work on this off of the rock and then apply it to the rock once I get it where I want it. So now that that's dry a bit, I'm going to add some of the Born Pretty on here, just kind of in random, not even, just messy. Actually, I'm going to put it around the edges quite a bit, that way I can 
make sure it goes off of the paper onto the edges a bit. That'll be pretty, I think. So basically this is going to make a double stick layer, like a tacky. And you can use tacket for this. But if you guys are like me, you probably have a bottle of this nail foil glue that's not, it doesn't really work on standard nail foils. So you can get a partial transfer, but it's not good if you want a nice perfect transfer. That's why we use the UV products. So if you're doing art where it's not important uh, to have a full transfer, like if you don't need the perfect design, this is totally workable. For your nail foils. This is what they used in the beginning before UV gel. Apparently nail foils have been around for a while and you know I just stumbled onto them so. Okay that's enough of that and that gets pretty sticky pretty fast so and we'll let that keep working. I've lost comments so hopefully you guys are doing okay. <laughs> let me see if I can pull them back up. There we go. How did I make the bubbles? Are you asking about the pendant, Lonnie? I'm sorry, I just saw that. Where did I put it? Um, it was just some pieces of dust. I don't know how I made it. It was, I picked it up and painted this inside it. And when it dried, it dried like that. And then um, I was troubleshooting with... Um, a, I guess associate at the company at the solar color dust company asking because I thought there was something wrong with my stuff they said if you use it on a, a surface that has dust particles or any kind of moisture um, it'll do that I know I I don't think I could make it happen again like that if I tried I'm pretty sure I couldn't but I'm going to put Lonnie's name on that one. <laughs> okay, so for the copper um, ink, and I think it is water-based, I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of distressing here and there. So it doesn't have to be anything perfect, just... And this is probably not even going to show because I'm going to be covering it up, but the owl bits will. You can see it's just minimal. I like it. What do you guys think? Yep, dries really fast too. Okay. Let's check over here. Okay, let's see how this works. So this is how I did that. Oops, it's a little gummy still, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so that's how that happens. You just find a dryer spot and it sticks a little bit. And it'll tear it off if it's not dry enough. So yeah, you have to let your decoupage stuff dry for at least 24 hours before you start messing with it. That's totally important, but I wanted to show you guys how I made that. So, and that's gonna be covered on my rock later. 
but definitely give it at least 24 hours of dry time before you start doing stuff like that to it. Okay, so here we're going to do some dichroic belly and add some stuff in there. And do like a little steampunk gears and stuff. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, Sydney, you got to watch that. I hope I'm saying your name right, Sydney. But yeah, you got to watch that uh, Amazon cart. <laughs> I've heard that I'm dangerous. If a person's got to be dangerous, right? <laughs> At least it's death by shopping. <laughs> yeah, Sydney. Sydney. Cinda. Oh, gotcha. Okay, Cinda. Not Cinda. Sorry. My bad. Okay, so with these, I'm going to turn it over this way. The backwards. So this is what I'm going to have up. So I'm turning it over. And I'm just going to make a um, trace around the part that I want to be in my pendant. Oops. So I don't know if you noticed there, I crinkled it up. I forgot I skipped over a part. Hang on, guys. I'll go back. Okay, this is <laughs> another thing that a lot of us have ended up with by default thinking it was nail foil because it is sold that way. I call it imposter foil. Um, sometimes you get it in combination with other foil. These are actually cellophane, cellophane slices or strips and they do not work like foil you can't you know nothing will come off of the back of these so they're just this anyways there are some cool things you can do with them you can use them like this or you can take these little pieces here and cut them up into little bitty little tiny bits like chunky glitter and add it to your your work you know your top coat or whatever and have like a nice faceted looking piece to work with but today I am going to oh I think I cut it too small I'm gonna start over don't be me cut on the outside of your line hopefully I have some more of the red I'm pretty sure right there it is Okay. Sorry, you want to wrinkle it first. That way you know that it's smaller. If it gets smaller from the wrinkles. Okay. cut around the outside of the line so you don't cut too small. See, we all can learn from each other, right? So he, these two items, the Born Pretty nail glue, nail foil glue, and this are some items that uh, we have recently not been able to use. So. Hopefully this will help you use up some products that you have laying around. There, that's perfect. Okay, so once we get it to this point, you have a couple of choices. You can either use nail glue, a tacket. If you use a tacket, that is water-based, and you're going to need to let it dry for quite some time before you use nail UV products on it. So I'm going to stay with the UV line. I'm going to use a UV nail 
uh, foil glue here so that it'll bond. You can use top coat, you can use anything that you have that will grab onto it. So, and I'm not going to use a whole bunch, just, just a thin coating here in the bottom. So it has like some grip down there, right? I'm gonna shoot it with my light. <laughs> and then it gets even stickier, so you can really stick it down at that point. Okay, now I'm going to do some fun stuff. I have in my magic box over here I spy with my little eye Well, I was hoping to use, I have those really pretty metal chrome flakes, and they're not where I usually keep them. still going to do some cool stuff, I promise. So we're going to mix up a nice soup. Here's some glitter. Okay. With this big builder gel, the thick builder gel, we're going to mix a little bit and make like a jewel on the belly here. Yeah, I don't know where they went. They were here. I had them out for tonight. And, um, you know, <laughs> I moved stuff around. I'm kind of bummed about that, actually. Okay, quick and distracted. So the Builder Gel is a thick UV gel. It is um, very much like top coat and nail glue and it's they're all resin this one's just a thicker more clear glossier kind of gel so I'm going to take a bit of this And I'm going to work with it on, this is a label that I have um, left over from shipping. I just peel off the shipping label and then save these backs to work on. <laughs> I'm so bummed about that. I'm going to use these fun mermaid flakes in here we're gonna have a mix of things going on 
some of those. Like I said, we're going to make a soup. <laughs> this is Glitter Hippo. This comes, you get a sample of these glitters when you order the liquid crystal from the Solar Dust Company. They also have Glitter Hippo, their sister company. And these are so well sealed. <laughs> anyway, aren't they cute? They're little um, candy pods. Anyways, there's glitter in these pods. <laughs> and you put some of that in there. Do you guys ever just mix up stuff? <laughs> just because it looks fun. Okay, I also have these pretty mermaid flakes I'm going to put in there too. Mixed media is about messy, so don't be thinking you're going to be all clean and stuff. It's going to get messy. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. It's kind of fun, you know, it's relaxing because you just let that whole stress go about being organized and neat. And I live in messy, so I mean, that's where my brain likes to stay. My house is nice and put together, but my, my art studio is not. <laughs> so now I'm just going to mix this up. Nice. <laughs> nice and gooey. And then I'm going to put it in that. And you don't need this to be super thick. You can just spread it around because you're just giving it some texture and more facets and just just more right and I will bring you down so you can see this here in just a moment this is so fun oh my gosh I'm loving this you know the camera does not do this justice and if you guys have done any of the dichroic bezel um, pendants yet Oh my gosh, you know. So this is going to be a layers kind of thing. So once you get that layered out, um, give it a little torch. If you can find your torch, <laughs> torch it. You see how beautiful that is? Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. So, I'm just going to keep... I have some more bubbles in there. I'm going to hit it with my flashlight. And then I'm going to pop it in my machine for 60 seconds or so. Let that work in there. And while that's in there working, let's look at these other cogs I brought out for the other decor on this rock we're working on. Oh yeah, mermaid flakes are like permanent almost because <laughs> they have a a side on them that's um they're kind of formed so they stick to everything. Anyways, you got to get a all you got to do is get a lint roller and it pulls them right off of there.
You know what, guys? I might have been wrong about that. No, the owl was in there. It was in there. See, I like these clock pieces, too, that I got. You can use things like this on your rock. So here's some cogs. And then I also have these little bitty baby ones, which I don't know if those are going to fit in there anywhere, but I do like them. So I'm going to keep those close by. Come here, Mr. Owl. Okay. Oh, and this is um, Builder Gel has a inhibition layer, so it will stay sticky. That will stay like that. You can, um, they say you can remove it with alcohol, but we're going to be putting top coat on it, so I don't really think it's necessary. Right, so I'm going to dump these out so that <laughs> we can find some fun things to put in here. Like, let's build a belly, right? Oh, look at that one. It's got, like, depth to it. It's got fun stuff. <laughs> Julie, I got it on Amazon. So it's just kind of a, you know, pick, pick out what you want to see on your, on your piece. I'm not good at this part either. <laughs> I can never make up my mind on oh, which things do I like better. But I know someone who is good at this. Lonnie. Okay, so then you can use sequins rhinestones buttons pearls lordy anything that you think works you know you can pop it in there i just have one more thing i want to look at real quick Am I crazy or do those like make kind of owl wings? Those are pink though. I'm not digging that. I do have these. Anyways, I don't know if I'm going steampunk. I'm just showing you guys different things that you can uh, work with. You can use rhinestones, big buttons, big sequins, little sequins. I have these pretty ones I think I want to play with too. Maybe not those, but... <laughs> Dang it, more money, says Maloney. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so over here, let me look at that pretty. Okay, here's some littler ones. Yay. Let's do these for. I have two. Oh, of course I don't. You guys love hearing me talk to myself, don't you? <laughs> so I was thinking two of these would be good wings, but I only have one of those that I have. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, I don't know which yeses. Oh my gosh. 
I know I've done too much here. Now I don't know which ones. Oh, look what I found. I found another one. Okay. So I think I like these. For some little owl wings. Like that. Maybe. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Jen, that's a great idea. You can always tint these to a different color. Yeah, you don't have to live with any. There's nothing's permanent, right? <laughs> this is art we're talking about. Do we like these for wings? I know they have like holes on them, but those don't have to live there either, right? We can cover those up with rhinestones or other stuff. But like, look, see, here's rhinestone. You just pop them right on top there and then you've covered up those holes. All right, so let's let me show you how I gotta find my alcohol ink. Actually, I think I have some right here. Oh, this is gonna be so fun and messy. I love it. Except I can't move nothing. <laughs> it's all stuck. Silicone. <laughs> all right. So, you basically just dip it or give it a bath or just sprinkle it on the top, just like I did with the distressing. Just a minute, I'm looking for my brown. There it is. Which I've never used. Always open your alcohol ink over a safe place because it sprays everywhere. All right, so a little drop of brown and a little drop of mango. These handy dandy little swabbies. And then you just tint it. And now you have an amber stone. Cool catch, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. I'll bring these up so you can see them here in just a minute. So really, I mean, if you have a bunch of alcohol inks, you don't have to buy tons of different colors and rhinestones because you can literally influence any clear or AB that you want. Let me show you. So now those pretty AB faceted clears are amberish. And I'm going to add a little gold to the top, you know, because I can. Because <laughs> why not? Because that's what we're doing. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it looks topaz. So pretty. And they dry super fast. You know how alcohol ink is. Pretty, pretty. Now let's look at it in Mrs. Owl. We're going to turn her into a Mrs. She's going to be Queen Owl. Look at that. Perfect. Perfection. See, it was this color.
No rules in art. None. So back to the cogs. I'm still, I'm still feeling those. So I'm going to pick up some. I think two. I like two. You like two? And then we'll have some rhinestones in here. Okay. We're going to work on this layer. So I'm going to put another coat of barrier builder black. Actually, I'm going to use a different one. I know. No, don't hate me. This one's just easier for me to deal with. It's a builder gel as well. It's just a five in one. So it does more things than just build depth. But I'm just going to use it for a quick coat. This is the one I used for blooming, which if you missed that gecko on... Oh, which one was that? I can't remember now. <laughs> Anyways, it was one of my geckos. We made snake skin on the gecko um, with the builder gel. So you do have to move this one around. So I'm just grabbing a disposable eyeliner brush. And bringing it to the edges, but not over. So in this layer, I'm going to put the cogs. And I'm going to adhere the whatever those wing bits are that we just made. Okay. And, oops, because I'm going to add just a little bit of this to the, so it'll stick, uh, so that other cog will stick on this. I know I had two. <laughs> Did you guys see where the other one went? Oh no. Did it fall on my lap? What? Guys, I haven't gone anywhere. Where did it go? <laughs> what is going on? I see this one. Lonnie says to my left. <laughs> this is nuts. Where did it go? Under the cog pieces. Nope. Okay. Wow. It's official weird. That's really strange. 
I've, this has been happening to me all day. Like, I can't find things. And I can't remember my words. And what is going on? Hmm. I, I'm at a loss. Oh, hell, it make another one. I can't because I only had two of those. You know, it's happening because I only had two of those. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we'll make two of these and hopefully... <laughs> what is going on? Okay, I haven't moved since I did that part. You're my witnesses, guys. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Guess where it is? In the back, it went in the garbage. <laughs> it was on the back of my other paper. <laughs> okay, so back to business. I apologize. Whew. So I'm dropping that right in there. Just like so. This is where a little pre-planning comes in, you know, to play like it does really help if you pre-plan a bit. Actually, I think owl wings are up a bit, huh? Let me move these down. Yeah, see, I had them off. That's better. Yeah? Now, we're in... Wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> she said. Thank you guys for being so understanding and and very nice cheerleader. Thank you. <laughs> so here I'm going to put some rhinestones, you know, because I think it's so pretty. What colors should we put, guys? I got every color you could think of, so pick some colors. Oh, and let's remember, it's going on this. You know, I think I'm just going to cure that a little. And then I'll use some Bondic. <laughs> Bambi, you're hilarious. But I do have that color. <laughs> I say pick a color. She says, what is that, azure blue. Oh, you're funny. Isn't that about like, what am I doing? There's a hue blue and azure blue, right there if I can grab it. There's one, about like that, right Bambi? I think that would be beautiful there. Yay. Like that. And then I need to put some little ones here. So... Let me grab the Bondic and set those ones that I just put in there. <laughs> Get back in there. It comes apart. I didn't break it, I promise. There. This handy tool is called Bondic, if you haven't seen it before. It's a bonding adhesive that is UV activated.
Oops, too big. I'm going to give her another blue one. Just a tad smaller. Maybe this one. I think that's too big, too. I'm like in between sizes here. What's going on? Okay, that one will have to work. Did we like that or not? Oh, we want blue eyes for the owl too? Or we'll do blue blue there. Actually, I think I want like those really, owls have the prettiest golden eyes. But we could do blue. My stone fell in there, so I'm going to double stack it. All right, <laughs> no fighting, yellow topaz, let's see. Okay, like that? <laughs> Might have to make them just I like your new pic, your new um, picture, Lori. Your um, what is that? Profile picture. Okay, I'm going to grab some little ones and then glue this onto the rock and then put a sealer coat on that. So little ones for on here, I think I'm going to use Actually, I'm wondering, I don't know if they will work there, but they're like a um, marquee looking. Can you guys see those? I think I'm going to use those. Can you see them? Yeah, thank you. I agree. Um, yes, please. The cool thing about Bondic is it's a little thick, so your stuff kind of sits in it sometimes when you, like this is on a tilt slant, so it's pretty cool.
Oh, that's not the right color. Hmm. Wow. That's not the right one. <laughs> Glad I didn't seal it. Is that the right one? Yeah. They are so close, it's hard to see. And then I put the purple ones down here. This is fun, guys. It's so fun. It just keeps, you know, you can keep going and going and going. But wait until you see what I'm going to do next. Oh, my gosh. My favorite. <laughs> okay. So now those are on there. I'm going to do some top coat in there to make sure those don't go anywhere. That's not what I'm doing next, but I'm doing something next. All right, so regular top coat here. And I'm trying not to get it on the actual rhinestones because I want to see the facets. But I do want to seal my work. And since our alcohol ink sort of took the shine or the gloss off of the rhinestones, this will put put back that shimmer or the what would that be the gla glass look, I guess. Okay. Okay. I got the absolute cutest ever crowns from Amazon in the mail today. Can you guys see? So I'm of course going to put a crown on the owl. Let's see, I have all these out except for this one, I believe. So I'll show you the different ones. <laughs> right? I had to buy these because when I did the bee, a whole bunch of people wanted a bee. So I had to buy a bunch of crowns because I only had two. So... Oh, yeah, I have a plan for this one, too. And they don't always have to be crowns, you know. They could be other things. Also, I was going to show you how to build a crown if you don't have a crown, but you have some other jewels. Yeah, I have plans <laughs> on my messy table today. Okay, here they are. So these 
One, two, three, four, five. I'm missing one. Heck if I know one of these. <laughs> oh, it's this one right here. Okay. So these six come together. This is not. This is different. But if you guys have bought the other sets that have um, nail jewels in them, these are pretty common. These down here. So you can take your shaped stones and just kind of create a crown out of stones and rhinestones. So like if you were working on, you know, a bee or whatever and you didn't have a crown, you could find some if you have like a marquee and some rounds and then just line them up and put them together and make a crown. Anyway, so that's another idea. But so for this owl, which crown do you guys like? Second from the left, this one. This is the most popular one. Yes. Okay, well, let's try them on. Because, watch this. I'm going to show you guys. It is an owl, right? So this tiara, if you turn it upside down. Upside down, you're turning me. I think I just dated myself. <laughs> See how cool that looks? Upside down tiara is one. Here's the one that you guys are voting on. <laughs> if I could pick it up. That is pretty cool. And we can change the color on these too. So they don't have to be silver. Here's one with pearls. That's quite pretty. Oh my gosh, come on. Focus. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, let's see. Okay, crooked crown. Right, we wear it. <laughs> uh, Julie, I got them on Amazon. I have links to you all. So sorry, I should. I didn't know what I was doing when I first started this, but so. Then there's this one. And this one. So between my personal favorites are this one, if we're going for the crown right side up, because it's kind of a, like a feather up there. Oh, please stay. I just want you to see. Of course, it would be up a bit more. Okay. But it's falling off the rock. So in order to show you. Or the upside down tiara. <laughs> They're in your cart. Yeah, the upside down tiara. Okay, cool. You guys, I love it. Thank you. Right on. All right, so we're going to adhere that first so I don't have to deal with it <laughs> on the rock. So I'm going to, thankfully, there's this little lip here from the loop that I removed. This is going to take all four of my hands. <laughs> And I'm going to have to use my flashlight for this one. Okay, so. Good. Good. 
feathers over the eye. How do I do that? How do I put feathers over the eyes? Brown. Okay, look. There's so much we can do, guys. Look at that. Good Lord, you saw where I was going with it, right? Should I turn this to a different color? You know, I think we we could do. I think we could work with Ronnie, uh, Lori's idea. I don't know. They're the wrong kind of feather, but just hold on for a second, because yeah, I don't think that's gonna. <laughs> No, but no, just no. But I have some little, the little marquees here. In amber. Are we yes on the beak? Okay, yes on the beak, and I hear you, um, Lori, about the alcohol ink. Let me try that real quick. Good idea. See, you guys are on it. And the beak. So that's a yes. Now, should we leave the beak or turn it to brown? Or no, it would be yellow. The what? Well, owl's beaks are bright yellow, right? Or we could just leave it pretty a b. So 
I'm going to put it on there and then we can change the color if we don't like it. Nope, the beak's the right side up because owl's beaks are squattier at the bottom and narrower at the top. I turned it over on purpose. I'm just using some alcohol to clean the wax off of the beak and the eyes. Okay, so then got, I think I'm just going to use a little bit of the brown on the outer parts of the, well, this one might not work on there. Hop. That's pretty. Do you guys like that? I can take all the alcohol off of the um, alcohol ink off of the rhinestone if we don't like it. But do we like it? Okay, I keep seeing who is that saying they think it needs more up here. Like that. Or we could do like a single feather or a couple of those for feathers. Ooh, wouldn't that be fun for an owl hat? So these three are no, or which one? <laughs> well, that one's kind of pretty. I kind of need a uh, frame for these. The big one. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know which one. This one? Eh, oh well. So is it this one we like, guys?
Bye, Jen. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. You're such a trooper to hang out with us. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to glue that one on there. And then I'm going to turn this one over and pop this one right, I think. There. Cross your fingers that it's straight. <laughs> cross, cross. Oh, trusting. <laughs> Yay! What luck, huh? That is a beautiful crown, y'all. We did good. I love teamwork. All right, now we're going to pop it on the rock and voila. And you just thought I was done, didn't you? You should know better. I have a couple more things up my sleeve. It's a rub on transfer. I think I did it wrong, but I put it the wrong way. Look at that pretty. There's that green, and I'll put this one, since I put the other one in the wrong place, like, to put it like, yeah, like that. But you guys didn't think you could do one over a curve, huh? All you got to do is find somebody who doesn't like rules and let them break it. <laughs> That's me. There's no rules. You just have to be patient. Make sure when you tear them off that you're going real slow, just like foil. Lift up slow. I know. Hi, Katie Cakes. Look. Yay. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that just work? Mm. <laughs> rules, rules. Who's, what, what rules are we talking about, man? You know, I have some others. 
Like, I got a flower. Nah, that'll be too busy. I, what do you think? Are we done? Or should we put some of these on there? <laughs> you know, because I never know when to quit. <laughs> okay, I got to be done. So, we're going to to attach this to the rock. Make sure everything is adhered. It helps if you buff the back of metal a little bit, scratch it up. Sandpaper will work just fine since I have this sitting right here. The nail file. <clears throat> okay, so see how it's nice and scratchy? That'll help your glue to stick to the rock. Glue being resin. <laughs> We're going to stick that peppy right in the resin. Now, you guys either have to take my word for it that it's going to look good on the resin or you have to wait for me to clean up that so I can resin it. I'll leave it up to you. Would you like to see it all finished or do you want to take my word for it and I'll post a picture? Either one I'm totally fine with. I have time either way. Let's see, there's 17 of you. If I get three yeses, I will stay. That's two. Haha. <laughs> Bambi for the tie break. No. <laughs> All right, I'm staying. I'm already cleaning up, so we are ahead of this game here. I'm pretty fast, so. Now that I'm saying that, watch. <laughs> well, uh -huh. so somebody tell a joke. And I got a good joke. PG thirteen. We got to have a naughty night, you know, but we still need a PG-13 joke. <laughs> You're safe. She's like, nope, I ain't going there. Nope, no jokes here. <laughs> Fresh out of PG-13, huh? <laughs> The treasure. <laughs> oh, Bambi says, yes, please, on the naughty night. We got to plan one of those. Maybe not a terribly naughty, but, you know, halfway naughty. We'll do one. That's not PG-13. You know, if we want to say a few little bad words or something, we can do that. Because YouTube, um, you know, my channel's not, I don't have a rating, so... I'm not saying I'll hold, I'm not saying go nuts though, because I do have a few people who watch it that are not uh, 21, so. So maybe no F word. <laughs> okay, I think we can do some resin here. Colleen. All right, make sure you sign your work. Yeah, 
I'm going to offset it just a little like that. Mr. Resin. I don't want to, but because it's rounded, I'm going to have to use my fingers. Um, it does, actually. Katie, the Born Pretty stuff does work better than Tacket on the foils, for sure. Right, I am going to pop the owl right there in the wet resin. And it's very slippery. So I'm going to hit it with my light just to put it in, hold it in place while I get it in the big light. And I'm also going to be adding some adhesive to points around the owl so that we have some extra bond. Did I put it away? I'm being too efficient here. This is cool. It has like a needle applicator so you can push it up under your what you're working on if you have space. And then this light, this little light, will get up under there. Okay, now pop it in your big light and cure your resin as usual, which is about six minutes. That's three cycles on a 84 watt. I have a Beatles. Uh, Joy T is perfect. Any higher watt um, light is about six minutes. I'm not going to go all six minutes, so you guys don't have to hang out for that, but I will show you in just a couple of minutes the finished product, finished piece. Got to make sure all that resin is out of the area, all the glues. That was totally fun. I think mixed media is probably 
beginning to be a favorite. I was so afraid of it for a long time. Just, you know, I don't know. I wasn't comfortable with it, but I'm getting more comfortable as time goes on. Almost done. About 30 more seconds. So guys, I want to say thank you so, so, so much. Oh, the belly looks like a nebula. You're right. Oh, let's talk about that. <laughs> this is for tomorrow night. We are going to be doing a um, Galaxy Nebula live on our uh, Facebook group at Creative Rock Art and Foil Techniques on Facebook. So come over there and join us live tomorrow at 7.30. Katie and I will be doing a galaxy. It doesn't have to be on a round. It can be on anything, a rock. I'm going to be using a rock. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to use this rock. So about the same size, but you can use a flat Santorini, river rock, whatever. Uh, you'll need some makeup sponges or a sponge this is what I use to do this. Um, some basic paint, doesn't have to be the basic brand, but basic acrylic paint um, in colors that you would like to see your galaxy. And um, sequins and foils. So that's what we're doing. Here we are. That turned out so good. You guys are so smart about where to put things. That's with the flash on. Ooh, those eyes. Whoever told me to do that, thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, they, you can, they're so owl. Like, whoo, whoo. Look at that belly. totally fun. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for hanging out. And if you haven't, please hit subscribe and consider sending your friends over to visit us and hit like if you enjoyed what you saw here today. Ta-ta.